Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series on this channel. Uh, we're going to be playing Prismata for at least a little while. I don't know how many episodes we'll do. I usually don't when I start a series. But, um, we'll see how you guys like it. Um, let me tell you, what is Prismata before we get started? Um, it's a game that was on Kickstarter, like, late 2014. Uh, I supported it on Kickstarter and was, like, really excited about the game and played it a lot for, like, I don't know, three months. Maybe, maybe as much as six months, but looking at my past game history, about three months seems right. And then I, like, sort of lost interest and uh, didn't follow it for a while. I, you know, read stuff about it occasionally, watched the, the odd stream, but didn't uh, really play. And then just last week, I heard that they had just had their, their Steam release. Uh, I think they went out of what was finally the Kickstarter alpha into, like, the Steam early access or whatever. Who knows? It's on Steam now, anyway. Um, and that, that got me interested to try it out again, and I've been having fun with it, so I thought that I would show you guys uh, what is the deal with this game. Um, so I will begin uh, by just loading up a game, and uh, uh, how do I, here we go, where is the computer? So we're just going to play against the computer here, um, and I'll tell you some about what uh, all, all of this on the screen means. Uh, but first, like, what is Prismata in general? It is, when they were um, putting together this game, the sort of code name they had for it before they decided on a real name was Magic Chess Dominion Starcraft. Because it features very strongly, like, uh, it, I used the word features already. So it's, it, it features prominently uh, some of the key aspects of those four games, Magic the Gathering, Chess, Dominion and Starcraft. And I'm at least passingly interested in all of those, although not like super excited about any of them except for Dominion and in the past Starcraft. Um, so what this game is, is a game for two players. It's a game of perfect information. Um, so there's like chess, you take turns uh, and you always, you know what options are legal at any time and what options will ever become legal. Um, so in principle, you could solve this, but the game tree is too large to do that with uh, conveniently, so it's not solved. Um, that's sort of what makes it chessy, is you're going back and forth with the other player, and you already know everything he can do, and he knows everything you can do, but you got to figure out, like, what's the best thing. Um, it's a bit like Magic the Gathering in that we have these two sort of board states. He, my opponent, Masterbot, owns everything above the middle line, and his stuff is painted red. I own everything below the middle line, and my stuff is painted blue. Um, and the game progresses by building more stuff to put it onto your board with the goal of destroying the stuff on your opponent's side of the board in much the way that Magic the Gathering does. Um, and it is like StarCraft in that you sort of have this resource economy and everything is themed militaristically. There are, you can see down on the bottom, five different kinds of resource. I usually don't think of energy as a resource, but um, it is. Um, there's like gold, and then which you use for buying pretty much everything. And there's these three high-tech resources you invest in to like, if I want to build a unit, let's say I decide that I want to build um, militias this game. Um, they cost six gold and one blue. Um, so if I wanted to invest heavily in militias, I would invest in getting lots of blue resources. Um, but that wouldn't help me at all to buy, say, Isochronus, which costs green. I would have to invest in green to get that. And so there's sort of a, like, not exactly a tech tree, but a very shallow version of a tech tree, where you start off being able to only build kind of weak stuff, and you direct your economy into building units that you think will be effective against what your opponent is doing. You can't just switch at any time and buy whatever you want. You have to plan for it and build up your economy and your forces and your technology. Uh, so that's sort of what is like StarCraft. And in addition, the military theme, right? We're, we're smashing stuff. We're building an economy to attack our enemy. Uh, and lastly, it is like Dominion. Um, so uh, in that, just like in Dominion, if you've played it, Dominion is a game where you have a deck and you're... you're um, you're buying new cards to add to your deck. 
uh, when, you know, and, and uh, every game there's the same, like, I don't know, 12 or 13, what, uh, like, actually less than that. There's uh, the three types of money, copper, silver, gold, curses, estates, duchies, and provinces. So in, in, in Dominion, there are seven kinds of cards that are always available to purchase, but what keeps the game interesting and fresh is that... Um, there are additionally a set of 10, there's a, a vast library of, of Dominion cards that exist, and every game you don't play with all of them, it would be too overwhelming. Rather you select, randomly or by some other method, a very small subset of 10 cards that will be available to buy this game in addition to the 7 that are always there. And Prismata uses that mechanic. You start every game, you have these 11 base, resource, uh, base units available to buy. Every game you can buy engineers. Every game you can buy drones. You could buy conduits. They're one way to get green resources. Blast forges give you blue resources. Animuses give you red resources. Um, and you can, you know, buy force fields, gauss cannons, walls, steel splitters, tarsiers, and rhinos. Those are the things you can buy every game. But in addition, there's a smaller number of uh, of units pulled from a much vaster library. And the idea is. Um, the stuff in here tends to be a little bit stronger than what's in the base set, so you're encouraged to use it. But you have to figure out how to use it uh, in conjunction with other stuff in the in the plus five or with the rest of the base set. Like, I can't win just by building, say, Isochronuses forever. You know, if nothing else, I'll have to build some drones so that I can have enough money to buy more Isochronuses. So Prismata is about those those four games feature strongly, and um, now I've explained what they all are, so how do we actually play Prismata? The idea is every turn you... Uh, I'm not, by the way, set up to, for a tutorial. I'm not, I know that what I'm getting is, is a tutorial, and that's what I want to do, I just don't know how to do it. So it's going to come out a bit muddied, I suspect. Um, when it's your turn, anytime you want... Um, well, okay, let's look at the two units. So this Engineer um, costs two gold. Right now we have zero gold, so we can't build any. And his, uh, he has one health in the bottom right corner of his uh, portrait. And um, at the start of your turn, gain one energy. Great. So as you can see, since we have these two engineers, we have two energy right now. What can you do with energy? Well, what you can do with energy is to build a drone costs three gold and one energy. Okay, so we have two energy, but we don't have any gold. How do we get gold? That's what drones are all about. So they have a click ability. You can click units every turn. Hang on, I didn't hear that. Okay, I thought that maybe the sound was messed up, but yeah, you can hear the drone. Um, when you click a drone, you gain some gold. And the, the thing about Prismata is, since it's a game of perfect information and, um, and taking turns, it has an undo tree. You can always, I can take an action, like say click a drone, and maybe I decided, oh, you know, it, it gave me some money. Maybe I said, you know what, that's not a good idea. L let's not click the drone. I can just say, I, I take that back. I don't want to click the drone, and notice I don't have the money anymore. I can go back and forth like this as much as I like, as long as it's still my opponent's turn. Um, sorry, still my turn. Once it's my opponent's turn, uh, my moves are, are committed. So the usual thing to do, almost all the time, is every turn you start by clicking all your drones, which um, you can do individually, uh, but that really stinks. Um, or you can like, you can do this, it's very fancy, or there's other shortcuts that let you uh, do it much more efficiently. They, they have great keyboard shortcuts in this game. So anyway, now we have $7 and two energy. So I'm gonna do exactly what my opponent did, and I'm gonna buy two drones. And they're not available this turn, but there's a little marker on them saying that I'll have them next turn. And if I wanted to, you know, I can cancel this as well, of course, and I get the money back. Uh, when I'm done, I say, yep, I'm ready, commit, give my opponent the turn. And he's probably just going to build two more drones, that seems pretty likely. And a conduit, maybe? No, he can't, but I can. So the thing is, he's player one, which is an advantage, and so he gets one fewer drone than I do. I have to go second, which is a disadvantage, but I get more drones, which is an advantage, and it's it's kind of like, they're roughly equal. Um, I'm not a Prismata expert. I don't know um, whether player one or player two is favored these days. It'll vary depending on what the uh, set is. But we have different things available to us economically. And uh, so this turn started, and I forgot to mention, I just did what I always do. I just 
gathered all my gold. Now I have 10 bucks. I can buy whatever I want with those $10. Um, note, I don't have any green or blue or red, so the only things I can buy are engineers, drones, and uh, these things that produce green, blue, and red. Everything else consumes green, blue, and red. Um, so a really common thing to do here uh, would be to build two drones and then a conduit. Um, Conduit produces green resource, one green resource every turn. And uh, just like gold, green resource carries over in between turns. So if I, let's say, I, I don't know if this is actually a good play. We're probably not going to play a whole, like, good game against Masterbot. I'm just going to do things that kind of seem sort of reasonable uh, and then lose. But uh, fine. We can do this and say I'm building a conduit. And it's telling me here, by the way, it's projecting. Next turn, I'll have access to 11 gold. How nice. Um, and as you can see, it gathered the, my conduit for me, or my green, automatically, because it just says start a turn, gain some green. And now I gather my drones, and I have some money and some green. And if I wanted to, I could build, say, an Isochronus. This is a, a unit that attacks the enemy. Um, and it has some sort of complicated features. You know what I should have done is maybe played, like, just the base set to show you guys. You know what, let's do that actually. We can easily, um, I'll just resign um, against Masterbot. This is an unrated game, who cares? And we'll just, uh, real quick, let's see, so I can just get rid of all of those. Play just the base set, please. I don't know what the best strategy is in base set, but uh, this, this reduces the number of things that I have to teach you guys, because the uh, advanced units tend to be more complicated. The base set stuff is pretty simple. So we're going to do the same thing, except for player one this time. So I'll build two drones. And my opponent will build two drones. Fine. And I'll build two drones as well. So this is, like, a prismatic game tends to start this way, where players kind of build drones for a while, because drones are good. Um, but eventually, you kind of, like... Now, this turn, I have access to... Uh, let's actually undo this. I have access to $12. Why don't I just buy four drones? I can buy two, but if I try to buy more, I need more energy. Remember, the engineers produce energy and we only have two of them. So we can only build two drones now. Um, one thing we could have done would be to um, build an additional engineer last turn, and then we could build three drones this turn. Um, that's sort of committing to a very slow but high economy game. Um, where you're vulnerable for a while, but if you can survive that, you have more resources available. I don't think that's a good idea in base only, so we're not going to do it. Uh, now, instead, I could just wait. I could let these $6 float and say, okay, your turn. But eventually, I'm going to need to build things other than drones, right? I have $6, so what I'm going to do is build an Animus. So each of the three basic resource-producing things behaves slightly differently. We saw Conduit. It gives us one green. And green is carried over in between turns. Um, blue and red are not. And red is the most expensive... Uh, sorry, Animus of these three buildings is the most expensive. But you get two red out of it. So it's sort of like... Um, we're getting two red for three dollars each. But we have to actually spend both of those red. Otherwise we're paying six for a single red, which would be a bad deal. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to build some red, and we can get into why later. Although you guys can see down here, Tarsiers and Rhinos are like the main reason we're building red, so I must want one of those. And my opponent's built a conduit. Let's see what he does next. Okay. So he's chosen to build a Gauss Cannon. This is the first attacking unit we've seen. It costs him, as you can see in the top right corner, or indeed right here, uh, six gold plus a green. And he has a green because he built a conduit last turn. Um, and this unit will be on his side of the board next turn, just like drones, you know, Gauss cannons arrive next turn. Um, and its effect is just, at the start of your turn, gain one attack. So we're going to see the first attack happening soon. Um, and so I'm going to build a Rhino with my red. So Rhino is a sort of complicated unit compared to the other stuff we've looked at so far. Um, it has two health, so so far we've only seen like stuff with one health mostly. Um, 
and a couple of other weird attributes. One is you can click it and gain an attack. So it's in a way like it attacks just as much as this Gauss Cannon does. Um, and it has what's called prompt. So that means that the turn that I build it, it's able to defend. Um, or the, the next turn, rather. Mm, yeah, next turn, I guess. Uh, my opponent will be attacking me for one next turn, and I'll have my Rhino available to defend. I already have Engineers available to defend, you can tell, because they say blocker. Um, but I'd rather defend with the Rhino, and I'll tell you why. Um, the Rhino has two health, and in this game, most units uh, heal back up to full at the end of every turn, even if they've taken damage. So my idea is, and this is a very kind of common thing, is that this Rhino has two health, He's going to attack me for one, I'll let the Rhino take one damage, and it'll be healed, and he won't have destroyed anything. Whereas if I didn't build the Rhino, I could still block, he could attack my Engineer, and I would lose the Engineer. But if I build the Rhino, I don't lose an Engineer, and I don't lose the Rhino, and I have a Rhino next turn. Cool. Um, so that's, that's what the idea is with this Rhino, and now I would like to find some way to spend my remaining seven dollars and one red. Um, I think a pretty reasonable choice is to build a Tarsier. So these are the basic red attackers. So each color sort of has a basic attacker and a basic defender. Um, the Rhino is sort of a basic defender. It can attack a little bit, but it's not very good at it. It's much better at defending. <laughs> well, it's not great at either one of them, but it can do both. Tarsiers are only attackers. They have one health, uh, which means if they get attacked at all, they're destroyed, uh, just like a drone or an engineer. Uh, but unlike Engineers, they're not blockers. Uh, they are not available for me to choose to defend with. Uh, Tarsiers take two turns to build, unlike most units which take only one. Uh, and when they appear, you get one attack per turn. So in a way, like, this Gauss Cannon costs six and a green to build, and attacks for one per turn. The Tarsier costs just four and a red to build. So it's cheaper and produces the same thing, one attack per turn. Uh, but it produces it later, so you kind of have to invest in the future. And it's more fragile. If, if my opponent ever gets to attack one of my Tarsiers, it's very, very bad for me. Uh, but if I get to attack his Gauss Cannon, it's like not that big a deal. So that's sort of how these units trade off, because it has, it has five health. Um, and uh, so that's the idea with, with these red guys. And so what am I going to do next? Probably just, I got three dollars left, I could build a drone. I'd like to have more drones, um, because I'll get more money every turn. But it's sort of a, an investment, right? You can see right now, if I build nothing, I'll have $15 next turn. Building a drone gives me $1 every turn, so you think, well, maybe you should have more than 15 But actually, since it costs you 3 up front, it's sort of an investment that in the, in the immediate future, you have less money if you build drones. But in the long term, you have more money. And so you have to make sure you can afford that delay. Eventually, it gets to the point that there's enough pressure that it's unsafe to build more drones and you have to do more immediate stuff. So I'm going to do this. I don't know if a drone's a good idea. I don't play any base only. And I'm not... It's been so long since I've played seriously that um, I don't know if what I'm doing is even good uh, in general. But it like seems okay. It's not awful. Uh, and now this is the first time we're seeing an attack. I get to choose where to distribute this one damage. And as we talked about, I could put it on the Engineer. It says you'll lose the Engineer. Um, or I can put it on the Rhino, and the Rhino will heal back up. So there you go. I have the Rhino back. Um, but remember, this is perfect information, so I can undo if I wanted, and show you guys that I could I could do it either way. And also, by the way, you can there's a shortcut to make the game ask the game what's a reasonable way to defend, and it says you should put it on the Rhino. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. So we'll do that. And now this turn, I could attack if I want. And I'll actually get to kill one of his engineers if I do so, because he doesn't have um, any other blockers. Um, but I'd actually rather not. What I'm going to do this turn is build two more Tarsiers. I'd like to try to build up the amount of attack that I have, since my opponent's doing the same thing, building more attackers. He's attacking for two this turn. And if I attack with my Rhino, my opponent will get to kill both of my engineers, which I don't like very much. So I'm going to hold back the Rhino, allowing it to... Ah! Something I didn't mention. 
when you click with something, notice it goes from blue to black. That means it's used up. It's attacking instead of doing its other thing, uh, instead of being available to block. So I would not be able to use it to block this turn. So I'm gonna build. I'm gonna hold back the Rhino. Build two more Tarsiers. Very efficient attackers. I'd love to build as many as I can as I can afford. Uh, but I may. I will eventually come under some pressure and not be able to keep building them. Uh, and I'm also gonna build a Blast Forge. I'd like to get some blue resources going. Um, Blue is pretty cool because it is the efficient uh, defenders in the game tend to be blue. So we could build a wall if we had some blue, which costs about the same amount as a rhino, five blue instead of five red, but it has three health instead of two. So you can use the wall to defend and then use your rhino to attack or something like that. Um, so I'm going to do this. And my opponent's got the same idea. He sees I've got some attack coming, and he would probably like to have a wall. If I had to guess. Yeah, we're going to see a wall come down. And I can, again, ask the game, what's a reasonable way to defend this? Is lose the Engineer, and then block on the Rhino. I could just lose the Rhino, or block straight onto the Rhino, but since it would be completely destroyed, I don't benefit from its regeneration ability. So if I instead do this... Um, I lose the Engineer, but keep the Rhino, which is great, because Rhinos are much more valuable than Engineers. Okay, so we'll gather up all our money. My opponent's attacking for three, and it's warning me, hey, you know, if you if you block like this, your opponent can kill everything. You won't be able to, um, to absorb. So that's that's sort of what we talk about, is what we've been showing you is absorbing two damage. If I, if I like, block onto this wall, say, one damage to the Engineer and two more to the wall, the wall is sort of absorbing two damage without being killed. And so it warns you if you're not absorbing. It's very useful to be able to do that. Um, I don't think I can do this. That's probably not good enough. Okay. So what I'm going to do is build one Tarsier this turn. I could afford to build two. Uh, but I'm worried that if I do that, I won't have enough engineers to defend his Gauss cannons next turn. So I'm going to build only one Tarsier and build two more engineers. They're defenders, they can block for one, um, but they're not prompt, so I won't have them until next turn, which is fine, I don't need any right now. And I could attack with the Rhino, but notice if I, I'm attacking for one right now, if I attack with the Rhino, then I'm only attacking for two, and that will still do no damage to my opponent. He'll just block with the wall, reducing it to one health, and then heal the fall. So something we didn't mention earlier is that Rhinos have what's called stamina. They can only attack so many times per game. Two, specifically, for Rhinos. Uh, so I don't want to spend one of my Rhinos' limited attacks doing nothing to my opponent. I'll just hold back the Rhino again. There you go. That's our turn. And when my opponent attacks for three, I'll just lose the Engineer and absorb on the wall. But that'll mean I'll have no Engineers left, which is kind of bad. It makes it hard to defend flexibly. So I built some more, uh, anticipating this outcome. Now, my opponent's building a lot more attackers, right? He's he's going from three attackers last turn to five attackers next turn, um, which, is, which is a threat for sure. Um, I'm just going to do something that seems sort of reasonable. I don't know if it's good, again. Um, build two more Tarsiers. They're efficient attackers. I'd like to build a lot of them. And build another wall to defend. Um, and watch what happens uh, when my opponent attacks me with five. Uh, five attack. So first off, I'm attacking him for four. He loses the two engineers and absorbs on the wall. Um, he attacks me for five, and I can defend on a wall, losing it, and then absorb two on the other wall. So pretty effective turn. I just like lost... I spent a wall in order to buy myself some time to build more Tarsiers. Um, now there's something interesting going on here, which is that my opponent has... How much uh, defense? He has six. And we sort of saw that, like, it's efficient to defend with two walls against five attack. I could do this, for example. I could threaten him with five, he would lose a wall, and defend absorbing onto the other wall. But what if I don't attack with my Rhino? I'm attacking for four, and because he doesn't have engineers to allow him to defend flexibly, he has to lose a whole wall as if I were attacking for five, even though I'm only attacking for four. Um... What on earth? Why is he building another Blast Forge? This seems like a very poor play to me. Masterbot is usually not a complete idiot. Um, 
He's not a great player, but I lose to him sometimes. This Blast Forge seems very odd to me. I don't get it. Um, but okay, so we're going to just attack for four. Keep holding back the Rhino. The opponent's going to attack for five again, so I'm going to build another wall. And I'm going to build two more Tarsiers. My opponent's not pressuring me enough to make me stop building attackers. And attack is sort of like the most valuable resource in this game, because your attackers are not used up when they attack, right? These Tarsiers have been contributing attack every turn, and I'll be contributing more and more attack every turn. Whereas the de defenders are sort of disposable, right? I've been building walls and losing walls, and building a wall to replace it and losing a wall. Oh, I see. I bet he's building his Blast Forge because he needs more walls, but he's never going to win that way. He's just going to delay losing. So Prismata is sort of a game of like an arms race where you're both building attackers until you get to the point where one of you like is overwhelmed and can't afford to build attackers anymore and starts building just defenders and you gradually wear down their defense because the attack keeps escalating and the defense gets more and more difficult. He's emoting me here just like who knows why. Um, yeah, and he didn't even use that extra blast forge he built. And now he's building more drones, which seems extremely ambitious to me. I don't think he's ever going to be able to use, like... These are not... This is not defensible. He, he He's going to not be able to hold on to these for long enough to see the advantage of getting extra money. He's investing in his future, but I don't think he has a future. So I'll attack with the Rhino now, because it's actually doing something, whereas last turn it wasn't. Um, and I'll just build a wall and more Tarsiers. Again, he's not threatening me. And we're getting a warning here. Tarsier supply has been depleted. So if you look over here, you actually only have access to 10 of each of these basic units. Um, so I'm going to have to find something else to do with all my red. You know, build rhinos, I guess. Uh, it's... You You would not... I... Mm, I was surprised when I realized, like, that games are sometimes de decided by... I could defend if only there were more, more walls left for me to build. I actually... The last game I played off-camera was against Masterbot, where I ran out of walls. And I also ran out of an, a, a, a building in the, in the advanced set, the plus five that was like a wall but better and I ran out of both of them but like was just able to that came just late enough that I could survive and, and push through his defenses anyway so we're just building kind of walls and more tarsiers and, and keep threatening him and see if he can come up with some clever way to show that his 16 drones are better than my 13 I don't think they are I have way more attackers than he does and that's what's important he has to lose all of his defenses except for the wall here and uh, that's going to make it very hard for him to defend again. Meanwhile, he's just costing me one wall per turn. I can build one wall per turn all day long. No problem. And he's not building any more attackers, but I am. That's how I know I'm winning. Right. Um, I could just build, like, a rhino. I don't know. What do I want to build exactly? So let's look at the other basic blue unit, which is the steel splitter. It costs six and a blue, the most expensive unit we've seen so far. Um, and it has gain one attack, kind of like a Tarsier, right? But it costs more. Why? What's the advantage? Well, one, you don't have to wait two turns for it to appear. And two, it has three health and is a blocker. So it's not as vulnerable to being uh, attacked as your Tarsiers are. Uh, and when it becomes necessary, you can convert the Steel Splitter from an attacker into a defender and sacrifice it to protect more vulnerable units like Tarsier. So that's why you, you kind of like pay a premium for these guys. They're flexible, whereas Tarsiers are cheap but efficient, uh, but sort of single-purposed. So I don't know. Let's build a Steel Splitter uh, and a Rhino and an Engineer. Is this good? I don't know. It seems like okay. It's a way to use most of my resources and do something productive with them while still threatening my opponent with more attack and preparing to defend more. So he has to lose two walls. And what's he doing this turn? Building two more walls. And more drones! Oh my god, I can't believe this guy. He's also building a new unit we haven't seen before. Force Field. So... Force Field is a very cheap defender in a way. It only costs one gold and a green, and it has two health. Um, so that's a lot better than the Rhino that had that cost five gold and a red and had two health. But Force Field also costs a drone when you build it. 
Um, so it's sort of like an emergency defense. You don't want to spend your drones if you don't have to, generally. But it, it, it's prompt, so it defends immediately, and it has two health. It's a very, you know, it's good at what it does as being an emergency defender, but it is an emergency. And my opponent is now building more conduits so he can have access to more green, so he can keep building more force fields. And they're sort of admitting defeat there. So we'll lose the Rhino and the Engineer and absorb on the wall. Attack with everything. And the game's warning me, you know, if you do that, you'll you'll get killed. You know, the, he'll breach your defenses. And I'm like, that's fine. I'll just build another wall. Keep building Rhinos. Build another Engineer. You know what? Let's build a drone. Let's show him. I'm so far ahead of you, I can build drones. And notice, by the way, that my attack is exactly one less than his defense. This happens a lot in Prismata, because you'd, you'd prefer, as much as you can, to spend all of your resources on attackers. You only spend on defense because your opponent is making you. And you can always see how much your opponent's going to... how much your opponent is capable of attacking for. They don't always attack for everything they're capable of. They have other priorities. Um, so he saw that I would be able to attack for 12, and he said, boy, I'm going to need at least 13 defense so that... Uh, he so that um, I can't destroy all of those units. If he had defended for only 12, I could kill all of his units, and he wouldn't get the value absorb of 2 damage on the wall. So that's why he's, attack he's defending for 13. Anyway, moving on. He loses everything but a wall here. And then builds a bunch of force fields and walls, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you can see he's done something interesting. Why is this drone red? He didn't click it. So you can see if I click all my drones, I'm like, actually, let's not harvest this drone. I don't want it to get the gold. Um, why would you ever do that? Isn't gold good? It is. But drones are also blockers. They can defend if you need them to in an emergency. Um, by See, I can attack for 13 here. If he didn't defend with the drone, then I could defeat all of his units, his, his defenders. He wouldn't get any absorb. And so he would prefer to sacrifice a single drone so that he can absorb two damage to keep the wall alive. It's sort of like, if he doesn't defend with the drone, he loses the wall. So he can promote his drone into a wall, in a way, by defending with it. Um, that's, a, that's a thing that many games, once you get to the late game, people are defending more and more with force fields and drones as they try to stay alive under the onslaught of all these attackers. But he's still just attacking me for five, so we expect to win uh, any minute now. And I'll just build more drones. There you go. He lost everything, blocking onto the wall. And he'll keep doing this for a while. He can stay alive for a while, but he can't ever really progress. So notice now this rhino now has zero health. Uh, sorry, zero stamina. It can't attack anymore. And it's not lit up any, so I can't attack with it. But it's still a useful defender. So that's a nice, cool thing that rhinos do, is they start out as attackers and transition into defenders. In fact, this one started as a defender, and then attacked, and then went back to defending. So that's nice. Um, my opponent's actually threatening to attack me for six for a change. He's built another Gauss Cannon. Somehow he hopes to, to overcome... Yeah, I mean, it's not really going to work for him, but sure. Put in the effort. So I'll just build another wall, and this time I'll lose an Engineer plus a wall. So I'm going to build another Engineer to replace the one I plan to lose. And another Rhino to keep attacking him. And another Drone to keep building more economy. It doesn't really matter. I expect him to resign pretty soon. Um, but uh, I'm going to just keep behaving as though... Oh, there he goes. The, res the resignation. As though I expected him to be around forever. And uh, although he has resigned, uh, we're just going to play this game out to its completion because I want to show you what happens when you can deal more damage than your enemy can block. Um, so we'll attack with everything here. And now I can say... Aha, you're out of blockers that you can choose how to defend with. I'll kill everything you've chosen to defend with, and now I can distribute my damage to anything of his that I want. And it's often a good idea to kill drones, although usually Tarsiers are an even higher priority, and there's other stuff that's higher priority. But generally killing drones is good because they're very... They only have one health, and what they do is pretty valuable. It costs me a lot of attack to kill a Steel Splitter or a Gauss Cannon or something, whereas killing a drone is very cheap. So I'll just say, yeah, kill four of his drones. And we'll just keep defending like we were. Wall, Engineer, Rhino, Drone. Um, 
I could, you know, instead of these, maybe I could build some more economy, like if I wanted to transition into green or something, but there's no real need. I don't know, we'll just, we'll just keep doing the same thing we've been doing. And I can say end turn, there you go. So he's, you know, as a bot, dutifully playing on, because I told him to, even though we all know he's lost. And this is like, this is how a game ends, right? Um, and this is the first time that we are seeing, let's see, we're building a wall, rhino, rhino drone. Now I can build two rhinos per turn. I built enough economy, how nice. Um, this Gauss cannon, I'm reducing from five health to one. And uh, this is where we see the difference between units with red heart health and units with blue health. The red ones don't get to heal the full at the end of turn. They're called fragile. Um, and so green units tend to be fragile, and they tend to have a lot of health, but they don't get to re restore it. Um, so here we go. We can continue breaching his defenses, is what they call it, and just wipe out as many of his Gauss cannons as I can. Um, and I don't need to build walls anymore, because he's not attacking. Uh, he's not killing anything with his attack. I'll just defend onto the wall. So I'll spend my blue on steel splitters instead, and more rhinos. And we're in fact now out of rhinos. So can't build anything with red anymore. But that's okay, because the game is, I think, over? No. He has two conduits left. All right. Well, we'll build a couple blast forge or a blast forge. I don't know. A couple drones. Sure. Doesn't really matter, as I've said a few times. We finally have killed him. And it says victory. We unlocked an achievement for Rhino Perfections. I'm not sure what that was all about. Uh, and you can look at stats, like, hey, you know, what was the economy graph? Like, you can see that my opponent had more economy than I did for a while. Um, but damage is sort of more important. He actually also had more damage than me, too. Just briefly, while he had those Gauss Cannons. He went really early into Gauss Cannons and Drones. Whereas I tried to go for red, the more efficient units, um, and then eventually to blue, the efficient defenders. And so my damage outpaced his, and he found it hard to keep up. And so the Prismatic games tend to look like this mountain, where things are building up, building up, building up, and you reach a breaking point where one player or both starts to get weaker instead of stronger, and you get into sort of the end game of like how long can each of you survive. And it shows you a view here of everything that happened, what you were building, what resources you had, what attacks you made. Um, and it even has a replay code, so we could, you could, you could put this into your browser, um, your Prismata game, and there's actually, I think, a browser-based replay as well, but if you were playing Prismata, you could look at that. We can watch the replay, turn by turn, use an analysis board and see, well, what if I'd done this other thing? How would that go? Um, anyway, so that's our first game of Prismata, uh, and... I guess I should have said at the beginning of the video, if you already know how to play Prismata, this, this video is going to be not that interesting, unless you like listening to me talk, which like, hey, you're on my channel, so probably you do. Um, but uh, it's, it gets a lot more interesting or more complicated with the actual advanced units beyond just the base set. Um, we played with just base set here. Players never really do that. Um, it was just for a teaching game. Uh, in the next episode, we'll introduce some advanced units to play with and play against Masterbot again. And we'll continue playing untimed for a while. I'll show you guys the time controls, um, but I'm, I'm a pretty slow player anyway, and talking to you guys slows me down a lot. Uh, so I, I can't really play with time controls on right now. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you're interested in more Prismata, you know, come on back. I'll upload some more videos of this shortly. And um, you can get it for yourself. It's on Steam if you want. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.